Hey, how you doing? Hey, this is uh, Admin from Plex Guy. This is the version four of the install video. So um, yeah, things have just been changing so much. Uh, it, it, was, it was almost becoming an eyesore from version three. But in order to streamline these videos, what I'll start doing is I'll literally just start breaking down into the areas that they're in. So instead of the long Plex Guy video that we have prior where we try to teach you everything, this will solely focus on the install. But again, we'll break down the installs for you, you know, like our clone, Plex Drive, and all that stuff. And we already do have some of those sub videos. So right now, I'm just going to show you a quick demo of Hertzner. And the reason for this is because we have a lot of new members who buy big, expensive servers, realizing that sometimes they may work, sometimes they don't. And so with Hertzner, what you can do is you can get a cloud server. And so uh, this server right here is 249 euro a month. And what a lot of people don't understand about cloud servers are that they have the ability to come up within seconds, basically deploy, and they're ready to go. Uh, you can also make snapshots like VMware. So you, you know if you goof something, you can always revert back. This is how I do a lot of my testing. And then also you have the ability to rescale your server. So if you want to step it up, uh, right now, uh, you know you can upgrade your space. But um, this is pretty much a good cloud server, and this is everything that I would need. And the thing is, they only charge you basically like 0.004 I don't know, euro per hour. So if you shut off the machine, you're barely going to use any resources. So the reason this is very key is, is that this is a good way for you to test a lot of your stuff before going on to your main server. If you also have VMware, your own server at home, or a good reliable dedicated server, you're pretty good. But usually it's a lot of the virtual machines that have the most problems. So right now we got a root password. So again, this, this is just a dummy box and won't exist later on. But um, just to kind of show you how I do everything. So we're going to go ahead and kick this off. And <laughs> not a great way to start, right? Let's see. I'm already losing my mind. So again, I do appreciate a lot of you um, watching the prior videos. I know it's helped you a lot. It's helped us a lot. Kind of cut down on the things. Um, you know, as always, you know, just please subscribe and like. Um, I didn't realize the power of that until, you know, you're actually making the videos. So when you're doing that, you're actually helping um, spread the knowledge and let others know how good our videos are. Okay, so let me just go ahead and do this. And then enter the current password, or new one. And there we go. So basically, when I literally deployed the server, it literally took two minutes and I got this password. So a lot of people don't understand about a cloud server is just that you don't have to wait for somebody to build your images or do anything like that. So that's why it's good for testing and it's good for you. So if you're a new user to all this stuff, it's a good way to test out Google Drive and everything before you start losing your mind. And again, with the Hertzner cloud, um, everything works perfectly. So if everything works perfectly on your Hertzner cloud and you're having problems on what like people like to do here is like Seedbox and other ish, other things and special VPS configurations. Then they typically run into problems. So it's always good to um, test against them. The good thing too is you also get your own dedicated IPv4 address. And it sounds like I'm advertising them to you. I'm not. It's it's purely because it's what I use for my uh, deployment. Because if I was testing um, my server like my real one with uh, incomplete things, you know, I, I don't want to break it. So this has been a sanity check. And I've kind of had to push people towards this. So that's pretty much all there is to you know, get Plex Guy going. So on this main page here, which is install, like I said, there's three different methods. The first one works perfectly, but we did two other ones because some people probably like other ones or they have different ways of going about things. So we're going to go ahead and kick off with Plex Guy. So right now it's uh, complimenting me, saying that, hey, good job for using Ubuntu 1604. So right now, you'll probably see more in the future, but we dropped off a lot of our older stable ones due to fixing a lot of things. So we're going to go ahead and kick this off. Um, just to let you know in the future, if you do see developer, you always can use it. But it means that we're probably editing it real time or what we have left over. So if you're brave and you just want to see what's going on, you go to developer. If you go to stable, it's a fixed image in time. And sometimes if you see beta, it's a fairly confident version, a kind of like a semi-stable version. So it's up to you if you see any of the betas here. So we're going to go ahead and kick off stable and we're going to go ahead and kick it off there. See, and then we just go ahead and type Plex guide and there it goes. So right now, the first thing is just going to ask us is if we want to enable pushover notifications for demo purposes, we're not going to get into that. What this does is if you enable it, 
um, and you get an API from them, you'll basically get text messages on your phone or whatever you have hooked up letting you know um, how far the install is going, when your backups are occurring, and other status messages. So it's quite useful for some things. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and hit exit. Do we agree to install upgrade Plex Guide? Yes. Are you utilizing a domain? Yes. And for the purposes of this demo, I don't know if it will kick in in time. This is just a dummy domain. Okay. And then you just got to type in a um, an email address. So your search renew if for some reason you're using a domain. If you didn't enter a domain, uh, this piece won't occur. It'll just kind of skip over it. Okay. So right now it's just giving you feedback information. If for any reason any of this information is wrong, you can go to settings later in the program and change it. And um, it'll redeploy your container so you don't have any issue. So the thing is, if you watched your previous videos, you know a lot of this is pretty much shielded now. So there's a lot of code and a whole bunch of things running in the background that are occurring um, that even, even myself, when, when I was installing programs from other people, didn't realize it was occurring. You know, just kind of figure some files are moving, whatever. But right now it's just kicking off everything. You know, it's just doing updates. It's kicking off Ansible Playbook. It's going to grab your dependencies. It's going to build your folders out. Um, so again, in the previous demos, you've seen a lot of that uh, being utilized, like how we were coding. But again, we're going to start breaking down some of these videos to, to provide you a sanity check. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So it's going to still take a hot minute. So while we're waiting for this to install, uh, again, this is our website in the back, so you know, feel free to um, join it. Also, while um, you pretty much should have done this before, but make sure you check out our wiki. Um, basically, we'll have a lot of good information in there for you. See right there? So if you need to configure the applications, uh, configure Plex Guide itself, pre-install what you need to know, check out the information here. Because the more reading you do and, and the more you check out our forms, so we can go back to forms here. See, I linked it all around. So, you know, we got people talking about, you know, um, version, steps missing, you know, whatever's on the top of their mind. But sometimes some of the information that you're looking for might be in here. And also there is a search function up here. So if you're having problems with like NZB Git, for example, you may find useful information, see? So, and the same thing with the wiki. So if I was to type jacket, you know, one of the torrenting programs that helps you with uh, organizing all your trackers. You see how it brings up all that information for you. So feel free to use all this information. So the longest part that takes install in this process is Docker. I did build a Docker check in here for you. So what happens is if Docker fails to install, basically after this little portion of the program runs, if it fails to install, it will stop and tell you, hey, it's all jacked up and here are common reasons why. Um, and basically it legs out the program. We built that in because half the problems were from Docker failing to install. And it's not because it didn't want to install. It's because people were using Oz or whatever that is. Uh, uh, I'm used to ESXi. So, um, but there's a uh, certain things that people run that cause a lot of problems. Um, and again, a lot of people try VPSs. Uh, the VPSs tend to be the biggest source of the headache. Sometimes people don't have root access. They don't have, um, the, there's certain dependencies, there's certain things that are missing from a VPS that, that the carriers, uh, not the carriers, but the uh, hosts like to change that sometimes cause problems for you. Um, I know Wholesale Internet, I know Hertzner, and there's several other um, providers that do make this easy for you. So right now what it's doing is it's rebooting all the containers, installing Watchtower. And let's see where it kind of goes on from here. So if you do like to donate any of your CPU power, it does help out for the purposes of demo, no. But um, basically this does separate uh, deploy a separate container so it doesn't touch your system and it does help us. All right. So right now we can see that the program's loaded up, uh, not too long of a process. So again, this, uh, like I said, this, this Hersner Cloud is what makes uh, life a little easy for you and all of us for testing. Um, and again, it's great. Um, Sometimes you might like to do some experimental stuff and you don't have to worry about breaking your main original system. So basically that's all there is to install and we do have separate videos for you um, if you want to go through some of the options. But just some quick information, 
you need to install R clone and Plex Drive first. R clone, uh, Plex Drive being the first one, then R clone. Um, and we set it up where, you know, for some of you use Plex Drive before, it does automatically reboot. Um, we do have server information here for you. So if you know you, you want to need to look at your disk space or see what's going on, you, you can. Uh, we do have troubleshooting actions. So if you need to run um, the pre-installer again that you just saw, you can. And do other things. Here's some settings and tools. So you can change your domain name. You can enable the pushover notifications, make changes. You can turn your ports on and off. Um, so by default, the ports are on. And the reason we do that is because most people don't have domain names. Um, if you have problems with the reverse proxy, meaning accessing your domain, you, you can still access the program via port. You can also enhance your processor here, which fairly works well. You can This does not work on a virtual private machine or a VM. This is more for dedicated machines. And there is a difference. Basically, it keeps your processor running at its maximum capacity. Um, this is By default, this is off. But if you turn this on and your subdomains are working, HTTPS is the only thing that works. So um, if, you, if you see your HTTPS working, make sure you type it VPS and you see it working. Go ahead in here and then turn this on. So HTTP, TTP, the regular one, that's no longer working. Uh, Flickr rate right here built a super speed script. Basically what this does is allows you to um, add multiple um, Google drives. And um, right now Google has an upload limit of 7, 750 gigs per day. But with this, um, it has the ability, for example, if you have two drives, that'll be 1.5 terabytes. So basically, it combines your other drives in a sense. Well, not combining, but it kind of switches over and pushes up other stuff. We built a uh, watchtower thing here. So um, if you do not like your containers, your program's automatically updating, you can turn it off. And there is an import media function that Flickr has been working hard on. Here we do have a backup and restore tool. So you can choose to backup individual applications, or you can choose to do a mass backup or a mass restore. So that will definitely help you out. If you ever need to update Plex Guide, you just go here and you'll see these options. To save you time and sanity, you can also type, right, like right here, we have sudo pg update and pg dev. So pg dev will bring you to the latest developer version. If for some reason your Plex Guide is missing, so for example, if you're like one of these people that usually uh, might complain, so if you're in Plex Guide itself, so you see how we're, let's see, we're gonna go into Plex Guide. So now, right now, we're sitting in it. So now we're gonna do sudo dev, right? Let's say download the latest developer version. Oh, that's right. It's not sudo pg dev. You see right now? So you're getting all kinds of errors because you're sitting inside the file. So if I come back out of it, right, and I type Plex Guide, you see how there's an emergency mode? So the emergency mode is built in to help you. So basically, the emergency mode is now downloading Plex Guide for you. So now when we type it, it works. So we built a lot of special programs into this program, um, looping scripts, all kinds of things you're not fully aware of. But other than that, I hope you enjoy this information. And you can see right here, Flickr added an awesome security tool to let you know that, hey, you need to go to Fortainer and go secure it. Because if you don't go secure this, um, somebody can have access to all your containers and, and do whatever they want. Please subscribe, please like, uh, please comment the video. If you do have a minute to, please go to GitHub, and this does make the biggest difference for all of us, is click the star here. Um, this basically promotes our uh, project higher up in the, uh, the GitHub resource world, so it's probably how you came across it. Um, and then, again, feel free to, to register, uh, come by and chat with us, ask us questions, come by our Discord channel. Um, everything is uh, good from there.